Tell us more about green growth um, and the kind of projects that um, you're backing and calling green growth. Well, I think you heard the previous speaker. Basically, the transition of green growth requires having the right policies, financing uh, incentives, uh, all the precursors to make sure that there are the projects that the bank will finance are towards the green growth. Uh, the bank has a, a very large energy portfolio, for example, and in the energy portfolio, we are promoting a particular focus on renewable energy. Uh, to give you some examples, right, some of the flagship projects are one is in Kenya, uh, Menengai uh, Geothermal. This is like a game changer, which will result in something like 300 megawatt of geothermal energy. As you know, there's a large potential of geothermal in the Rift Valley in Kenya, uh, going all the way to Djibouti and Ethiopia. Uh, this has not been exploited to a large extent. This is a clean source of energy. It provides uh, green jobs, uh, income generation, and so on. So the bank is now launched uh, in a big way in Kenya, and it's going to be scaled up in the neighboring countries. So this is one example of a unique uh, geothermal application in the continent. We are seeing that elsewhere in Iceland where more than 90, 95% energy comes from geothermal. Another game changer is the wind. We have Lake Turkana wind power plant, which should be again over 300 megawatt. It's in a very remote area, northern Kenya, where there's strong wind, long transmission lines. So Kenya is one of our countries where we are working very closely on large-scale uh, renewable energy project. Now, that doesn't mean that we are not active in the smaller scale. We have different financing instruments to allow countries and communities to also tap into small-scale hydropower. For example, in Uganda, we had uh, Buzeruka. It's very small hydropower, 15 megawatts, run of the river. So it doesn't require damming the river. As you know, many of the large dams can cause environmental and social um, impacts, which might be difficult to manage. But a small hydropower in a remote location in Kenya where it, people would not have access to the grid-based uh, electricity is another example. Uh, we are also very active in supporting what is called cogeneration in association with UNEP uh, in, in Kenya, where in cogeneration we are going to sugar estates, plantations, and bagasse, the waste that comes out. Normally, it's just dumped out in huge piles, and it, in the rain, it just gets soaked up and generates all this nuisance. So you take that now, and it's fed into the boilers to generate steam, and the steam is used to generate steam power. So it's, this is what's called cogeneration. So there is an additional benefit in the renewable energy market. We have several other examples in uh, different areas, but right now the bank is now also establishing different financing instruments you may have heard of the Sustainable Energy for Africa which is based on the Danish uh, uh, funding, which is now becoming multilateral. And finally, the bank is also in the process of establishing a climate change trust fund with 5 million euros seed money from Europe. Now, this one is going to be directly responding to what our negotiators are discussing leading to the Green Climate Fund, the so-called $100 billion fund. Now, how do African countries access this fund unless they have the capacity. So this fund will provide what is called the readiness uh, review and uh, assistance for the readiness to be able to access directly from the Green Climate Fund. Anything other than renewable energy projects which you classify as green growth, for example, are you promoting uh, uh, cutting waste in agriculture, that sort of thing as well? Well, uh, agriculture is really not my area, uh, so I, I'm, not, I'm less familiar with it. But uh, at the same time, in agriculture, we also are emphasizing on the water storage. So because in agriculture, because of the climate impact and for, to respond to climate resiliency, you need to have large storage. So we have instruments in the bank called PIDA, Program for Infrastructure for Development, in which water storage programs are going to receive a lot of information. Agriculture as such is not the main focal areas of the bank in, that in terms of the overall supply chain. The bank's focus on in agriculture is more in provision of the infrastructure that facilitates the agriculture production and the transport.